Hello, Bruce Fulton here. Welcome to the second in a series of four lectures on database normalization. Second lecture means we're at second normal form, so let's get started. So, uh, I've seen second normal form explained a few different ways. Uh, here are, let's see, four different definitions. These all mean the same thing, uh, and these get a little bit confusing. Uh, the language is a little bit convoluted, so uh, let's read through a couple of these and parse exactly what they mean uh, with a very simple database example to start with. So, uh, all attributes are dependent on the full primary key. Uh, so, let's start out by saying that when we're talking about second normal form, we're talking about uh, uh, relations where we have a compound key. That is, uh, the key is at least two attributes. If uh, an entity has a primary key that is only one attribute, it's automatically in second normal form. Uh, and we can proceed directly to third normal form. So when I say uh, a compound key, if we take a look at this inventory example down here, uh, we have a part ID and a warehouse ID, uh, and we have a quantity, and then we have a warehouse address. Uh, and so, for example, suppose we have a widget, and we have five widgets in warehouse one and three widgets in warehouse two. Uh, then if we really want to identify what's going on, uh, we have five widgets in warehouse one, so we have the, the widget ID and we have the warehouse ID. Uh, and we need to know both of those things uh, to know how many widgets we have uh, in warehouse one and how many we have in warehouse two. So we have a compound ID. Uh, and uh, you'll see that when I show you the table. Uh, but we, ha we have a compound uh, ID, which means uh, we have two attributes. Uh, that make up this, this kind of line item, if you will, uh, of our inventory. And so, uh, in second normal form, we're really concerned about things that have a, um, that have this compound uh, key. Uh, and if, if, it's only, if it's only one attribute is the compound key for the whole thing, then we can move on to uh, 3NF. Now, uh, I, I, I want to be clear, too, that we, we don't get around this problem uh, by throwing this in access and having access assign uh, a single attribute um, uh, by an auto number field that, that we need to talk about conceptual keys, not, you know, just kind of making up a single key and moving on. So let's be clear about that. So we say all attributes are dependent on the full primary key. Uh, that means that um, uh, if we look at quantity, for example, here, uh, the quantity that we're talking about depends on the full key. That is, uh, if we're talking about five here, that's in warehouse one, and it's talking about the particular uh, widget part number. So uh, the quantity depends on uh, both of these two things, the full key. Warehouse address, though, really doesn't. Uh, it doesn't depend on part ID at all. The warehouse address really just depends on the warehouse ID. So uh, we've got a kind of a clue here that um, uh, this design might be failing second normal form. So let's look at the second way of phrasing this. No non-key column is dependent on only a portion of the primary key. Well, uh, that's really just the same way of saying that warehouse uh, address um, is dependent only on the warehouse ID. So it is a non-key column that is dependent on only a portion of the primary key. Uh, so again, by this, this phrasing here uh, is, is a little bit uh, troubling. The, the warehouse address is dependent on a portion of the primary key. A uh, third way of saying this, I found each non-key attribute is fully functionally dependent on the primary key. Um, this is a non-key attribute. It's not fully functional on uh, the full primary key. A fourth way of saying this is each attribute that is not in the primary key provides a fact that depends on the entire key. Well, again, that's just a way of saying uh, we have an attribute here, warehouse address, 
um, that it's not in the primary key provides a fact that depends on the entire key. Well, no, it doesn't. It, it provides a fact that depends only on warehouse ID. So we're kind of zeroing in on this warehouse address as being a little bit of a problem. Now, uh, the trick is being able to look at this and say, this is going to cause redundancy. So that, that's, that's the trick. Can you look at this? Can you look at this design and see how this is going to cause a redundancy problem? And that may be what's not quite so obvious to you. So maybe I have to kind of play around a little bit with the data to see how that works. And then, you know, experience will give you some some ability to, to see this coming, but maybe you don't see it coming quite yet. So let's look at a table. So here we've got the table uh, and here's our compound key. Uh, and when we actually put this together, we've got part ID 1 in warehouse 1, and we've got 5, and that's in our Tucson warehouse. And part ID 1, we've got in warehouse 2, and that's in our Phoenix warehouse. Okay, now, do you see the redundancy coming now? So part 2, um, we've got in warehouse 1, in our Tucson warehouse, and part 3, and so on. And so now you see where the redundancy is. We've got Tucson, Phoenix, Tucson, Tucson, Phoenix. So we have a case where uh, if we were to change, move the, the Tucson warehouse to uh, Yuma, um, and we were to change it here, we might have inconsistency in the database. So this is all the redundancy, the duplication. This is what we've got to get rid of. Uh, and so the solution, of course, is to uh, split off the warehouse ID and the warehouse address. When we create two tables like this, we've got Tucson and Phoenix in here just once. Uh, and now we can create a situation where uh, we can pull our um, uh, part ID and warehouse ID. Uh, we know if we need to what the address is, we can pull a report that relates the warehouse ID here to the warehouse ID here. We can create a report that shows the warehouse address for each one of these parts if we wanted to. Uh, but if we make an, um, an update to the system, we only have to update the warehouse address in one place. And so we've eliminated the redundancy. redundancy. So I think this is a fairly simple example uh, that shows what happens when uh, an attribute is, is dependent on only part of the key, uh, what causes the problem, uh, and what the solution is, which is to simply break that off and put it into a separate table. Uh, let's look at a little bit more complicated example. Uh, here, uh, let's consider an invoice. Uh, and an invoice is actually a fairly complicated beast. Uh, we might be tempted, uh, if we're pulling this over from a manual system, uh, which might try to, to track an invoice uh, on a single spreadsheet. Um, and, and let's consider just a few parts of this for right now, uh, where we've got the, the invoice itself and the line items on the invoice. So if you look at this actual invoice down here, uh, the invoice is determined by the invoice number and the date. And uh, let's consider the invoice itself and then consider the line item on the invoice. Line item on the invoice would have the um, uh, quantity and the inventory item uh, and the number ordered and the price. And, and I think um, if you look at this, uh, this might look like a rational table to you. And um, uh, in fact, um, uh, it, it's got several problems to it. I, I think we've got three things going on here. So we've got the order, uh, and let's see what the order really consists of. So if I, if I um, pull a little um, Excel trick here, uh, the order itself is defined by the order number and the order date, uh, and that's pretty much complete right there. Uh, we've identified really three uh, candidate keys here to be our primary key, and so the order is defined really by these two items here. The line item here uh, is, is, is fairly complicated. Uh, and so if we take a look at what's involved in the line item, uh, we've got uh, the order number, the item number, the number ordered, and the quoted price. Uh, so that actually uh, might be a separate uh, relation there. Uh, and if we look at the item then uh, itself, uh, that's the inventory item that we're pulling from. That probably is defined by the item number 
uh, and the description. So we've got three candidate uh, keys here. Uh, any one of these could be a key. We've really got three things going on as I see it. Um, you know, maybe you have a different idea, uh, but I think it divides out uh, this way. Uh, and so let's see what that looks like in terms of uh, the problem, what a problem table might look like and where the duplication or the redundancy might be if we tried to create this relation and what that solution might look like. So uh, here's the example. Here's what the table would look like uh, if you tried to create a single table with it. Uh, and this would um, uh, certainly violate second normal form. Uh, a couple of obvious redundancies here. We've got the rocking horse um, in two different places here. Uh, the item number uh, would be the candidate uh, key here. Uh, but the description comes from uh, 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 the inventory file and we've got the description in two different places so uh, we could have an update anomaly uh, we could have FD11 with a description here if we needed to correct the description we could conceivably have FD11 with a description here FD11 with a different description here uh, we've got a, a slightly more subtle um, problem here with the order number and the order date um, and, and the solution really is to break this out into the three entities that I suggested we had over here in our analysis. So the uh, 2NF normalization process for this table uh, looks like this. We would have an order, uh, order relation that consists of the order number and the order date, uh, the item um, uh, relation which would consist of the item number, uh, and the description. And then the order line is this combination of order number, item number, number ordered, uh, and quoted price. Uh, and here you can see that Rocking Horse and Bobo Doll uh, are in here once only, uh, so that if we needed to correct the description of Rocking Horse, we only need to correct it one place. Uh, so this now uh, solution, the solution now is in uh, second normal form. Uh, and it proceeded from the analysis that we did uh, on the table, uh, breaking apart um, what, what this physical object, um, what this paper object suggested to us as we looked at it, that we had these three different, um, uh, three different relations in here. Uh, so once again, let's renew, uh, review, excuse me, uh, second normal form. Uh, and uh, all of these things uh, really say the same thing. I don't know which one of these you find simpler or uh, perhaps none of them, uh, but the idea is we have a, a, a compound key uh, and we have an item that, uh, or an attribute here uh, that depends on only one of those, um, uh, depends on only one of, of the, the parts of the compound key. And that's our first clue uh, that we may have a problem here. So if you just look at each one of the non-key attributes and say, do each of these non-key attributes depend on the whole key? That's probably the easiest tip uh, or the easiest to find tip uh, that you've got uh, a problem uh, with second normal form. And so remember, um, second normal form uh, is only an issue if we've got a compound key. Just make sure that all of the attributes depend on the whole of the compound key and you'll be good to go. So that finishes our uh, short lecture on second normal form. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll move on to the third lecture, uh, which as you might guess has to do with third normal form. Thank you.